Hi friends and welcome to week one of our Flinch Squad Circuit 2020 season. We are in the Ultra Series Part 2. We played the Ultra Series obviously in the 2019 season, the latter part of that, and then the Invitational which we've just had recently. But we are kicking off into a brand new season, the 2020 season. And this week we're going into round one. It is going to be a Swiss stage setup for the first portion of this tournament and then going into a top eight and um, we'll be keeping up and featuring a match every single week of the Swiss rounds and this week we'll be featuring Stu versus Hectic. You've got Stu on the bottom of your screen and Hectic on the top of your screen. Stu running a team of Minetric, Tapufini, Incineroar and Zygarde and then you can see Preston Hectic running that team of Lunala, Tapukoko, Stack Attacker and Rayquaza. So we'll get straight into this one today. Going to be a really good match. These two obviously played in the Invitational, had really good finishes, both making it into the top four of the event hectic obviously coming second and Stu finishing top four so really strong contenders and a really good one for us to kick off this week we're gonna see Stu lead out with the tapu fini and minetric as we see hectic lead out with that tapu coco and lunala shiny tapu coco making its way into the field as it summons its electric terrain and uh, that will only be so for so long as it is overwritten by the Tapafini's Misty Surge here, we are seeing the Minetric putting a little bit of pressure on the Tapu Coco with its Lightning Rod ability, but not one to stay in its Prevolution and going for that Mega Evolution, turning into Mega Minetric, going to access its Intimidate ability and it gets a huge speed boost to uh, make it faster than Tapu Coco and give it the ability to pivot out very quickly here and support that Tapu Fini. We are going to see a wide guard from Lunana, maybe suspecting a snarl here from the Minetric on Stu's side of the field, but Minetric not opting for that, going for the Volt Switch straight into the Tapu Coco and doing some nice damage even though it's not very effective, but Minetric returning to Stu as he is going to have the option to bring out something else and it is going to be that Incineroar going to cycle another Intimidate, not really going to be very useful against both these predominantly special attackers but it is going to be something that threatens that Lunala going into the next turn as we see Tapu Coco and Hectic then go for a Dazzling Gleam just get some nice damage out onto the field as you see in Nature's Madness from this Tapu Fini not playing around with any spread attacks to get knocked by the wide guard and just getting 50% down on that Lunala here so we are going to see the Tapu Coco come out for Hectic and replaced by that Rayquaza now going to hit the field um, and a really nice play from Hectic what you want to do is try and get Rayquaza onto the field after the Intimidator on your opponent's side is out so you're not affected by that and Rayquaza can start doing some big damage here. Stackers are going to replace that Lunala that is threatened by that Incineroar and we are going to see the Zygarde hit the field in place of that Tapu Fini. It is going to proc the Misty Seed and get that special defensive boost because of the item and the terrain that's on the go. We're going to see a U-turn just from the Incineroar. Not opting for a fake out here, just wanting more repositioning uh, as we are going to see the Incineroar retreat and the Minetric going to come back out again and get another Intimidate onto the field and lower the Rayquaza and the Stack Attack as attack stack by one stage. And this is the nice thing about Stu's team. He's got that double Intimidate now that he can just cycle. Stack Attacker could stay in but it is threatened by the Zygarde. You're going to see it retreat now as Lunala returns to the field once again for Hectic. And Stu's really got all the momentum now on his side of the field. Got to be a bit careful around this Zygarde. It can threaten it if we see an Earth Part into that potential Incineroar slot there or the, where the Minetric is. And that could do considerable damage here. Um, but we are going to see the Delta stream activated now as the Minetric just goes for another Volt Switch. This time into the Rayquaza. Going to chip that down a little bit. But the Delta stream... The protecting those flying types, taking away those weaknesses, not affected too much by that Volt Switch as we see Incineroar cycling once again and just cycling these Intimidates. It is a revolving door of Pokemon as we see the Intimidate effect that Rayquaza taking it down to minus two as we are going to see a sword stance from this Rayquaza going to nullify any of those Intimidate drops and get its attack stat back to normal as we are going to see a coil come out from the Zygarde just going to bolster its defenses, its attack and its accuracy here as we go into this next turn um, now you've got to think the Lunala if it does have the Z move it can prevent possibly put out some pressure here but we are just going to see a wide guard protect against them maybe a thousand arrows coming out from the Zygarde as the Rayquaza on Hectic Zen goes for another sword stance not really feeling too threatened here and wants to get the advantage going into the next turn a thousand arrows coming out from the Zygarde but blocked by that wide guard here onto the 
from the Lunala as we see another U-turn from the Incineroar. Not opting for a dog type attack this turn into the Lunala, just wanting to pivot out and cycle these Intimidates even more just to try and keep this Rayquaza in check as we go through this these next turns and uh, the Rayquaza are quite able here this next turn to go for another Sword Stance if it wants. The uh, Zygarde is really going to struggle to hit these Pokemon if we are going to see a continuation of Wygarde. But we just see a Volt Switch here from the Minetric into the Lunala, chipping it down even further. And another Intimidate coming out, just keeping that Rayquaza in check. Bringing it back down to neutral attack stat. And uh, it will be interesting to see if it goes for another Sword Stance, but this time opting for the Dragon Ascent, the big flying type attack, a signature move of Zy uh, Rayquaza into the Zygarde here. Going to do some nice damage, but because of that coil help and Zygarde out just a little bit more, it'll be interesting to see if we go for another. Oh, we're going to see a coil. I was going to say a thousand arrows here. I'm predicting maybe that you wouldn't go for the wine guard twice in a row, but uh, taking advantage of the opportunity to go for that coil as we see a trick room now set up from this Lunala, and that is going to play into the hands of this Zygarde and this Incineroar that are now on the field. Uh, we do have to worry about why god potentially coming out again from the lunala but this turn just going for a protect not wanting to throw out a wide guard and the the mind games are starting to play here as we see a u-turn from the incineral into that protect but blocked there as another call comes out from the zygar going to put its attack to three defense to three and accuracy to plus three so getting really really set up here as we see another sword stance come out from this requires this is all set up on each side of the field and the two ever can break through this setup first you know Stu's in a nice position where he is going to be able to cycle intimidate he's got a way to neutralize that requires but at the same time he's got to get rid of this lunala sooner than later because otherwise he's not going to be able to utilize these thousand arrows that he wants to on the zygarde we do see the incineral pivot out once again taking down finally this lunala on hectic side of the field and uh, the Incineroar pivoting out and you can imagine the Minetric going to come back in cycle these Intimidates just once again for Stu and uh, try and put this Rayquaza back in check. It has used Dragon Ascent so its defense is on minus one. We are going to see a Dragon Ascent this time into the Zygarde here as we see the stack attack I once again return to the field and this is a Pokemon that really enjoys that Trick Room environment. Very slow Pokemon going to be able to throw out some big attacks but once again, Stu going to be able to just cycle these Intimidates freely. Hectic really needs to punish these slots, you know. It, it's hard to ignore the Zygarde when it is boosting up with coils, but you need to punish the slot, the switch-ins, because if you're not punishing these slots, it is just going to continue to happen and happen. Uh, we are going to see a thousand arrows this time thrown out from the Zygarde. Going to hit both Pokemon, do huge damage. Didn't expect it to pick up the knockout onto the Rayquaza and does pick up the knockout onto the Stack Attacker. So Stu taking a big lead here with only one Pokemon left on Hectic side of the field. You don't think he's got much in the way of coming back into this one as we see the Zygarde activate that power construct ability and get it a hundred percent form onto the field and zygarde not a pokemon that you see too commonly used in the ultra series nice to see it doing some work here with the support options that we've got tapu coco now coming in for hectic and uh, not really looking too good with the trick room set up and a ground type on the opposite side of the field to tapu coco who will threaten it for a big knockout so we do see the forfeit so that is game one. We see a big lead there from Stu and uh, Hectic needs to make some adjustments going into game two. He has uh, a lot of trouble dealing with the double Intimidate here. So it'll be interesting to see what he does going into game two to try and mitigate that. Uh, try and get uh, a bit more use out of Lunala. All it did there was really uh, throw up wide guards. It took a big chunk of damage from Tapu Fini early on. And I think maybe utilizing the Tapu Koko a little bit more once that Minetric has Mega Evolved to, to deal with the Tapu Fini might be a better way for Hectic to approach the match. So we will go straight into game two now. So we go into game two, we are going to see an adjustment from Hetic here leading out with that uh, Rayquaza and the Incineroar. And if I'm Stu, to be honest, I don't really think like I need to really do anything else. The core that he brought in that game one is very solid. It does exactly what he needs it to do. It's all about 
disrupting your opponent, slowing your opponent's momentum down with a double intimidate and getting that Zygarde in and set up. The Trick Room from Hectic's end played a little bit more into Stu's hands than into Hectic's to be honest, especially for the late game. So maybe he wants to just mitigate using that until the, the, the opportunity arises, maybe try and get rid of the Zygarde and then get your stack attacker in and do some damage because that's when Stu will struggle. We are going to see the Minetric and Tapafini come out for Stu here, so smartly Hectic not bringing his uh, Tapu Koko to have that terrain just over it and straight away we are going to see the Minetric Mega Revolve it is going to get that Intimidate off into the Rayquaza and this Incineroar but Hectic in a position where he can go for a Soul Stance if he would like to now fake out maybe the Tapu Fini stop any Icy Wind Disruption, Nature's Madness Disruption there and you know the, the Volt Switch from the Minetric not doing much anyway so you're not really worried about that if you're Hectic so the Tapu Fini I think may be the target here for a fake out if that was myself playing will be interesting to see where he goes the metric going to protect in case of any fake out onto that side of the field here as we do see the incineral go for a fake out it is into that tapu finny stopping that from moving here and there we are we are going to see that sword stance now this forces Stu to almost bring in the incineral but a quick volt switch here could be uh, something he goes for um, but would you go for the volt switch into the incineral slot that would be the question we are going to see the tapu Coco come onto the field now for Hectic, so making better use of this Tapu Koko, we're going to get his electric terrain up. Now, this puts a lot of pressure onto the Tapu Fini. It also prevents the Zygarde coming in and having that uh, Misty Seed activated when it does hit the field. Now, Stu going to retreat the Minetric after the Volt Switch and pivot in Incineroar. Going to get another Intimidate onto this Requaza and reset that Sword Stance that it did the previous turn. Uh, will be interesting to see if this requires a goes for an attack here. It might try and get some damage onto this Tapu Fini, but just opting for another sword stance, knowing that that is what coming out from Stu. So the field going to get that attack stat to plus two once again as a Nature's Madness comes out and misses the Rayquaza. That's a huge turn. That's really unfortunate for Stu. We are going to see a fake out now into the Rayquaza and the Tapu Koko left unchecked, going for a Thunderbolt into the Tapu Fini and in the Electric Terrain, more than enough to pick up the knockout and Hectic doing exactly what we want wanted him to do to tie up this game in game two you know you need to get rid of this Tapu Fini and he's done it in such a way where the Mystery Terrain has not been utilized by the Zygarde it cannot get that special defensive boost and now the the Rayquaza are sitting in a nice position plus one Minetric coming back onto the field it is going to be boosted by the Electric Terrain so you've got to be a little bit careful with that but we are seeing Hectic make some nice adjustments here he's bringing in the Amoongus here just to soak up maybe some electric damage from this Minetric as we see the Zygarde replaced from that Incineroar on Stu's end. We are going to just see a Volt Switch and uh, Stu making some really nice plays here. He's, he's cycling the Intimidate really smartly here. He's getting the fast pivot out, taking out his slow Pokemon to bring Incineroar back onto the field to get that Intimidate back onto the Rayquaza here. Uh, there's no threat of Spore abuse from the Amoongus because of the Electric Terrain on the field at the minute as we are going to see a Dragon Ascent now finally thrown out from this Rayquaza. It is mutual so it is going to be hitting pretty hard. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much damage it does to the Zygarde. Taking it down to so well below half health as we are probably going to see the uh, the Power Construct ability activate. Zygarde going to get a lot of its health back. It will slow down a little bit, but it is going to get a lot more powerful and a lot more harder to, to deal with going into these latter turns. But Hectic doing everything he can in this game. Stu still in this. Needs to really start getting some damage onto the field though, because now it's a little bit of a reverse of game one where Stu was really in control of the game and, and um, getting all the damage onto the field where Hectic was struggling to be the defensive Park player in that game and, and not really getting the damage he needed out onto the field and uh, taking a lot of damage in turn but we are seeing the tables turn a little bit here as we see the Incineroar come in for Hectic on that Amoongus slot get the minus one onto the Zygote and the Incineroar, a thousand arrows coming out and doing some nice damage still to both Pokemon as we are going to see a Flare Blitz not opting for a U-turn this time around from Stu and maybe that is a little bit of a mistake because if you go for the U-turn there you can keep that Rayquaza in check and now this next turn with an active fake out it is going to be a lot harder to take an attack here especially if it's into something like the Incineroar on 
next Tuesday. We are going to see the Minetric come in though for that Zygarde. It is going to cycle Intimidate, reset the Intimidate onto that Zygarde uh, on Stu's side as we see the Incineroar switch straight out. Not wanting to take any chances, get that Amoongus back onto the field. And with the Electric Terrain expiring very soon, it's a smart play because you're going to be able to utilize these spores very shortly on Stu's side of the field. Now the Rayquaza are gone for a Dragon Ascent into that Incineroar and doing huge damage here and picking up a knockout onto the Incineroar defense and special defense lowering on the Rayquaza but that is a huge play taking away any sort of Intimidate abuse going forward. The Electric Train does disappear and Zygarde coming back onto the field now. The Rayquaza does have to be careful because its defenses have been dropped but it is in a very very strong position where the Amoongus can just redirect any attacks coming out but we're not going to see that. It is going to go into the Amoongus here maybe expecting a protect from the Rayquaza and a switch in to Incineroar um, and the Dragon Ascent in to that Zygarde slot but the Spore coming out now into the Manetric there's no real threat there for the Amoongus so quite happily easily able to do that as we see the Manetric have to take a snooze for another turn uh, the Zygarde open to a Dragon Ascent KO here as we see the Rayquaza launch that off and it is into that slot and you would think now it's going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout onto Zygarde and with Zygarde out the way Hectic going to be in a position to uh, close this matchup against the lowly Minetric now that is left on the field for Stu so really nice adjustments here from Hectic he took a lot of information from game one he knew what he had to do and I think identifying that the Tapu Fini was the big threat here that was really um, setting up everything on his side of the field disrupting doing big damage and it's interesting that uh, Hectic opted not to go for his Lunala in this match as well, leaving that at home, not really doing very much in that first game other than wide guarding and taking damage. Um, so it's going to be a really interesting third game here as we see both players have to make adjustments now. Uh, if you're hectic, you have to think that Stu is going to make adjustments. He's not going to get caught up by that same play again. But if you are um, Stu, you need to, you really need to be able to mitigate and manage um, the the board position a lot better, and maybe take advantage of Minetric's lightning rod ability. Even though you're going to want to be able to uh, utilize the Intimidate a lot more, because the Intimidate cycle is so strong, it's been able to stop that Rayquaza getting these Sword Stances up because it's such a fast threat. Once it does get a Sword Stance up, you're kind of forced to start pivoting out, and that's when Hectic can really start taking advantage of those. Um, almost obvious uh, switch ins and switch outs so we'll get into this third game we do see a couple of adjustments here from both players as we go back into game three I think uh, we are going to see Hectic bring that Lunala and Sogaleo looked like it was going to appear for Stu so we are going to see the Tapu Fini and Incineroar come out for Stu on the bottom of your screen and Lunala and Incineroar come out on top of your screen for Hectic here. Misty Surge going to be set up by this type of Finny, going to get that onto the field. And again, we're not going to see the type of Coco just yet, where it can come in, get its terrain up, and start pressuring that type of Finny that is such a problem for Hectic to deal with if he doesn't do it in the right way. Now we do see the Intimidate cycle from the Incineroars, and uh, we'll go on to this first turn as we see Lunala just switch straight out here for Hectic and that type of Coco like we say coming straight in just to start threatening and uh, putting a lot of pressure onto this Tapu Fini on Stu's side of the field. It'd be interesting if we see fake outs or if we see U-turns here. We are going to see a fake out from the Incineroar on Hectic side of the field and a U-turn from Stu. Now I always feel like if you go for the U-turn and your opponent goes for the fake out you're always in a much better position because you can adjust your board, you can get something on the field that's going to put a lot of pressure on the opponent side of the field rather than just sitting stagnant like the Incineroar now not really doing very much on Hectic side of the field. We do see the Tapu Fini switch out and a nice switch back into Zygarde expecting an electric tag attack there as the Sogaleo are going to switch straight back out for Stu as well. Just biding his time for when he wants to utilize that Pokemon and getting another Intimidate back in with his Incineroar onto the opposing Incineroar. And if the Tapu Koko has gone for a, a Thunderbolt here, you would imagine that the Zygarde's going to be able to soak it up and this results in a very nice play for Stu as we see the Lunala switch in for the Incineroar on a hectic side of the field. But a hectic reading into that, not falling for the trap just yet, going for a nice big Volt switch boosted by that Electric Terrain into the Incineroar on Stu's side of the field as the Rayquaza enters the field now and without the Minetric 
uh, on Stu's side of the field, it's going to be a lot harder to keep this Rayquaza in check. We are going to see the Lunala now switch out and Incineroar hit the field once again for Hectic. Going to cycle Intimidate onto both these physical attackers on Stu's side of the field. Just lowering that attack stat by one and if you are Stu, you could go for maybe a U-turn into the Incineroar slot or you could just go for that fake out just to prevent the Sword Stance setup on the Rayquaza because letting that thing Sword Stance now... It's going to be uh, very difficult to kind of keep in check without the double intimidate going forward in this match. We are going to see the requires a mega evolve, activate that delta stream to the field and uh, go straight for that sword stance. Um, which is going to make things very difficult, but you would imagine that Stu is going to go for that um, that U-turn as we do see the Zygarde go for a coil now. It's going to boost its attack stat by one, its defense by one, and accuracy by one. So we are going to see that U-turn from the Incineroar on Stu side into the opposing Incineroar. We'll get a little bit of chip damage there, and uh, he is going to be able to bring something in. Hopefully can pressure that Sogaleo here on hectic side of the field. The Sogaleo are going to be the Pokemon that coming in, but you've got to be worried about a fake out here from hectic side of the field. It is into the Sogaleo now, as we see another sword stance from this requires putting itself on two plus three or four, I believe. There's been no intimidate onto it already. Don't think so. And another coil coming out from the Zygarde here. And uh, just boosting that attack, defense, and accuracy by one stage, which is helping out against these potential big sword stanced Dragon Ascents that will be coming out from this Rayquaza. Now we are going to see a Dragon Ascent come out, and it will be into the Zygarde here. And this is likely to pick up a knockout, but you never know. The defense boost might help out. It hangs on with HHP. That is huge, huge for Stu. Can it take down the Incineroar? That is a big thing. It's going to do some big damage to this Rayquaza after the defense drop there. It takes down the Incineroar. Big, big turn there for Zygarde and uh, a huge critical hit onto the Rayquaza. Now, does it have a 50% berry? Um, if it does, it will proc that and maybe be able to survive whatever the Sogaleo is going to throw out at it. But a huge survival from that Zygarde here. And we are going to see a Z move. It is going to be the Sunsteel Strike signature Z move from the Sogaleo. We're going to have to cut this and then we'll be right back when it launches into the Rayquaza slot. And we're going to see the Roly Poly into the Rayquaza. Going to be more than enough to pick up a knockout. And a really, really huge turn here for Stu as he picks up the knockout onto this Rayquaza, removing that threat from the field here. The, the survival from this Zygarde is huge. You know, now it activates that power construct ability. It's got two coils under its belt. It is going to be a big threat for Hectic to deal with. That survival is massive. Uh, so we are going to see it uh, um, get into its complete form, get a bunch of HP back as well and put it into a good position going into the, the latter turns of this game. Now Lunala is still active on the field for Hectic so he's not out of the game just yet and also Tapu Koko, two big very offensive threats coming out on the field for Hectic so um, if the Lunala has maybe the Z move it can definitely pick up a knockout onto the Zygarde but Stu has to maintain momentum and play this right. We are going to see the Tapu Fini now come onto the field at the perfect time, going to proc that Misty Seed on the Zygarde as well. Just bolster that special defense for it, which is what it really needs in front of these two big special attackers right now. We are going to see just a Protect come out from the Zygarde as the Tapu Koko goes for Thunderbolt. And it will be into that Tapu Fini, but not as strong as before going in because of the Misty Terrain. And uh, just proccing one of those 50% berries. So Tapu Fini surviving and getting a nice chunk of health back with that Wiki Berry as a Moongast Beam now coming out. And then the double up into that slot. So can Tapu Fini survive? Even if it does though, it's not putting itself in a great place for this next turn. Because the one thing that you've got to think of the Zygarde's probably in a, in a tough position to uh, to pick up a knockout, especially when a wide guard being thrown up from this Lunala now, as another Thunderbolt comes out from this Tapu Koko into the Tapu Fini. Um, and, you know, Tapu Fini's went down pretty easy here, but it's done one good job here. It has made sure that, that that Misty Seed is activated on the Zygarde, as we do see a Thousand Arrows come out, but blocked by the wide guard here from that Lunala now. Incineroar coming out onto the field, it is going to cycle in Intimidate, it is going to be able to threaten the Lunala here on, on the Hectic side of the field and uh, the fake out pressuring that Tapu Koko this turn and uh, it does go for that, stopping the Tapu Koko from getting any damage off here as we see that and a, an Extreme Speed, I'm going to do some nice big damage to that Tapu Koko and potentially putting it in range for an Extreme Speed the next turn. You've got to think if you are 
stew here all you need to do extreme speed that tapu koko maybe protect this next turn just to um to get around the protect from the tapu koko and then uh but he's not going to go that he's just going down the extreme speed not even considering a protect from the tapu koko here and uh that leaves incineroar to quite easily deal with the lunala here and uh, just setting up that win condition because lunala not really a pokemon that can deal with incineroar in any uh, shape or form so the Zygarde going down and uh, Stu still got the Silver Layer to come in as we see a Snarl it does break that Shadow Shield on the Lunala and a lot of the special attack as well so are going to be able to come in now and clean up this game and uh, it looks like Stu is going to take a win in week one here as we see the circle layer just protect don't want to take any damage this turn around maybe suspecting possibly um uh, as he moves still but uh, this the snarl coming out from the incineral going to do some nice damage and definitely put this lunala in range for the circle layer to pick up the knockout this next turn if not the incineral is still going to be able to just pick it off with these snarls in a couple of turns so Stu doing a really nice job here and showing that zygarde still got a lot of potential in this format so massive props to both players really nice to see this game i hope you guys have enjoyed it we'll be back next week with round two and uh, until then take care of yourselves and bye bye